Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. So today I'm going to paint some pheasants or ring-necked pheasants as they're called in America apparently. Um, this is the time of year in, in England, especially when they are ready to be shot. So they get released at the end of September. And if you live in a place like I used to, when I lived in Kent, um, suddenly there are pheasants all over the roads and the hazard is not to hit one because they're the stupidest birds that ever did live. And they will walk in front of your car, no matter what you do, and stand there and stop and wait for you to hit them and run them over. Perhaps they think that's better than being shot, I don't know. Anyway, so this is a very um, iconic animal for um, the UK and I think it's quite interesting. Uh, what I'm going to do is today I'm going to paint some pheasants and this is one of my uh, practice pieces here and I'm going to paint the pheasants surrounded by Indian corn or um, the, I think there's another name for it, um, it is called not only Indian corn, but also calico corn, that's right. Calico corn, which I think in America they use a lot as decorative um, items for this season. So there we go, we're gonna combine American and English. So this is my sketch that I did this morning, and here we are, this is the drawing. So the drawing will be available to you on um, the website, dianeanton.com, if you want to go over there and get the sketch to download, then you'll be able to get a head start on the painting. So, let's get started. So, first thing to do is talk about the colours that we're going to use, hopefully, for this painting. And um, here I have got Potter's Pink, which I'm going to use mixed with uh, quinacridone gold for the basis of the female. Um, pheasant and then I've got um, various rather strong colours for the actual male pheasant himself. So we've got thalo blue, we've got olive green, burnt sienna, um, Windsor purple or Windsor violet, alizarin crimson, I've got um, pyrrole red, pyrrole scarlet which is going to be for his face uh, patch, he's got a very bright red face. We've got some Hansa yellow for the yellow of the eye which is also quite distinctive. Um, so those are basically the colours that we have. And I'm going to start off um, by mixing a little bit of um, Potter's Pink with some quinacridone gold, just to give me a kind of golden pink colour, obviously, <laughs> uh, which is going to be the basis of this bird. So We'll just pop that in and we'll change the colour as we go along, giving ourselves a bit of variety. And of course, as it dries, it will lighten up. So we'll just get that in as quickly as we can so that it doesn't um, soak in and leave lines. working on a piece of stretched watercolour paper here, the same paper that I used the other day to do the chickadees on. And uh, that worked out okay, but it's not easy paper to work with because it's, I think it's cotton and it soaks paper paint up quite readily, which is not necessarily easy to handle. So anyway, I'm just gonna put some more Potter's pink around the outside edge of the bird and let that blend in. And um, she's got a little bit more color on her back. When that's dry, I'll put in some little flecks um, for her markings, which are really camouflage markings on the female, aren't they? You don't want her to be too obvious.
when she's hiding in the undergrowth. So now um, for the male, I'm going to um, just use a little bit of Hansa Yellow for his eye and hopefully that will dry reasonably quickly and I'm just going to use that too with a touch of um, Butter's Pink for his beak and pop that in. And I suppose I should do hers as well. There we go. Now you can get quite carried away with the greens and the per and the um, the blues of the neck of this bird, because really they are quite dramatic colouring. Easily the most showy bird that you ever see on the roads in England, that's for sure. I think they originally, in fact I'm pretty sure, they came from China, I believe. Was it China or was it India? Maybe it was India. Now somebody will probably put me right on that. I don't remember exactly one of those countries. So that's the colour up there. Then we leave a white patch for his neck and then he goes a little bit more purpley down here and um, what's the word brown so we'll pick up some burnt sienna for that purple brown color and then on his back he's the same sort of color underneath as the female but he's going to have little flecks on there as well so we do that and we let that blend there and we come in with a bit of burnt sienna here and then a sort of greyish a greyish tone down here To let that dry I don't want that to to run so we wait for that to dry then we'll put in the red face area so meanwhile I'm going to go to the corn cobs and mm, seem to have picked up half a gallon of quinacridone there, so just brush that out and do the basic corn like that. And then the leaves are greenish, aren't they? So my olive green needs diluting down a bit. I think it's a bit bluish, bluish green. So we'll just drop in some some greens for the undercoat and we can come back in with some more colour.
And over here we've got another one. I'm going to put some darker kernels in there once that's dry. probably use, um, I'm not sure what I'm going to use actually to paint the, the, um, the silk, is it, that comes out of the top, but I'll just give some indication there, like that. Okay, now he's still damp, so I'm going to let him dry and I'll be back in a second or two. Okay, so I'm coming back in now with a few uh, touches of um, gold for the corn and um, some greenish gold in the leaves and things like that as well. So just generally doing a fairly free um, a fairly free interpretation of sweet corn. I can't be bothered to paint every single kernel that would be. too much. So we put some brownish ones in and some yellowish ones in and when it's a bit drier I'll come in with some dark brown ones as well. So I'll just leave that like that and then I need to put some more green into the leaves behind here. kind of loose and same thing over here but we'll make this side a little bit more golden and then we've got um, some little V-shaped markings on the female pheasant's chest, uh, back like that, and then some dots there and around here. And then his face. Now he's dry, he's got quite a bright red, very bright red actually. Wattle, you can see they're related to chickens, can't you? And that's pearl red with a little bit of alizarin crimson in it too. Okay, now I need to let that dry and then I'll come back in and finish off his markings. Now I'm going to put some little markings on the back here. And this is alizarin crimson mixed with olive green, which gives us a nice chestnut colour. So we'll just do that, making them smaller as they come closer, like that, just a few down there, and then we'll just put a few specks on here too, and then the same colour, so the dark red with a dash of green, for some quite big spots 
that they have there. And then we'll just indicate some of the curvy lines here with the same colour. And that will probably do for his markings. Come back into his face with a bit more dark red because even though these are core colours they're still dying back and fading out. Okay, and then tiny little bit of very pale grey, very pale, just to give a little bit of form there to the white ring because we need a few shadows there. And a couple of indicators of um, features on the female, her face, she needs a little bit of uh, shadow under her eye, across the top of her head, behind her beak, over here as well some lines. A few more lines down here. And we let that dry. Or maybe we'll make um, some of these V-shaped things just a little bit darker. One or two on here. And I think her eye needs a bit more brown around it. Okay, now time to let it dry again. I've picked up uh, my rigger, my Zen Art rigger, and I've got some pale brown and I'm just going to try to indicate a few lines here for the silk, which is not the easiest thing in the world to paint. So I'm not going to try to do that too accurately because that's, that's not the way I paint, but just to give a little bit of an indication of those filaments. using the same brush, some texture into the leaves, which are very um, texturized. To bring a painting to life, it's often necessary to be fairly brave and come in with some contrast. It's not always easy to do that. And sometimes you'll go too far, but that's okay, as they say. It's only a piece of paper. This is not dry yet, so I'm going to leave that to dry. I really am going to leave that for now. And I'm going to come back after lunch and finish it off. So I'll be back in a second. Okay, so that's completely dry now. And I'm going to come back in with the rigger and some, some golden colours. And I'm just going to put some strokes of grasses from uh, Imagination in the background there just to complete that a little bit, make that a little bit more lively. And then we'll take some dark green as well and uh, just emphasize a few of these 
grasses again. The ones we've already put in. Not too much, just a little. And then um, we wanted to put a few darker brown kernels, didn't we, into, into the Indian corn. So let me just do that. Some dark brown made from um, olive green and burnt sienna. <clears throat> Emphasize these a little bit too. You can do as much or as little as that as you want. fine lines in the leaves. Of corn because that's very typically very fine lined grain. <coughs> okay, I think that's probably pretty much getting there. If you take a look at the Facebook page today, we've got um, in the Facebook group, a new mug um, has come into the shop with the chickadees on it, which I think is really cute. I'm gonna have to order one of those. The chickadees that we did, uh, not the last video, but the one before. Take a look at that. And, um, and yeah, so I think we're gonna call that more or less done. You could probably play with it a bit more if you wanted to. Um, we could put a bit of spatter in the background. Maybe I'll do that with a toothbrush. Just a little bit of um, gold, I think, because it's kind of autumnal. So I hope you enjoyed watching me do that. Uh, do give us a like and subscribe and um, leave me any messages that you uh, want to communicate with me in the, in, in the um, messages below. Check out the description and take a look at the website of course dianenton.com where you will find the um, sketch for this which will be up there later today. So I'll say goodbye for now then everybody and thank you so much for being here. Thank you for all your kind wishes. Thank you for everything. And uh, we'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye bye for now. Bye bye. <laughs>